Hello friends, welcome to BISPTrainings.com. My name is Sumit and I'm a subject matter with BISP Solutions in CRM Salesforce. This is my a new video in Salesforce Advanced Development and this is mainly towards integration. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to configure Visual Studio Code for Salesforce. You might have gone through my previous video where I've integrated Salesforce with Eclipse to perf using force.com IDE to perform deployment. This is a new tool introduced by Visual Studio that is known as Visual Studio Code. And with the help of this Visual Studio Code, we can perform migration and deployment on Salesforce. So in order to continue this, first of all, we need to have the following. The first of all, we need to have a Salesforce developer org or a sandbox subscription and Visual Studio code installed need to be uh, on a machine. So you can, so those who have already installed Visual Studio code, it's pretty good for them, but those who haven't, so they can visit a link called HTTP, HTTPS slash code and they need to download Visual Studio Code. So code dot Visual Studio Code dot com slash download. So they need to visit this link and download the latest Visual Studio Code as per their operating system. So in my case, I have downloaded Windows 64 bit because my operating system is Windows 10 64 bit. So uh, it's, uh, it will download a setup file. You need to download and install it. The next tool which is required to integrate with Salesforce, that is Salesforce CLI. And in order to download Salesforce CLI, we, they can visit developer.salesforce.com slash tools. Uh, developer.salesforce.com slash tools slash SFD x c l i oh sorry so twitter developer dot salesforce dot com slash tools s f d x c l i so they need to download this tool to integrate to perform an integration between visual studio code and salesforce and here also as per the operating system they need to download salesforce cli and install it so it's a single command line interface for salesforce.com and all salesforce dx features so once you download the visual studio code and configure cli we need to install the Salesforce extension in Visual Studio Code. And in order to do that, first of all, we need to start out Visual Studio Code. And if you don't feel like the interface to work on, you can click on File, Preferences, and from here we can change the color theme. And by default, color theme is Dark Visual Studio. I can choose for Visual Studio Dark, or we can go for uh, another theme. For example, I can go for theme as like Visual Studio or uh, another one. So it depends whichever Visual Studio themes you like. So it depends on your requirement. So once it is done, we need to install the Salesforce extension in Visual Studio. And in order to do that, I'll go with, <clears throat> I click on extensions bar and in extension bar, I'll search here Salesforce extension for developing on salesforce platform so i'll just search for salesforce and when you search as soon as you start typing it will start looking for extension and as you can see i have installed salesforce cli cli integration and salesforce extension pack so that's the extension for developing on salesforce platform so in my case i have already installed this and uh, if you want to uh, if you want to install it you will get an icon here like install so you need to install it and once it is installed you are ready to uh, you are ready to integrate your visual studio code with your salesforce so let's have a look now how we are going to use visual studio for salesforce so for this i'll get click on explorer again and click on view command palette and first of all i'll say 
create project with manifest so i just enter create project with manifest it will activate the extension and once the extension is activated uh, it will take input from user so let me close this and uh, click again so it is asking for a project name so let's suppose i give project name as So I give project name as my BISP test, my BISP test project, or I simply say BISP test project. So, and create this project in the desired location. So it would be creating a project with the help of CLI integration. So SFDX will create a new project and we are ready. Once the project is created, we are ready to use it. So uh, once the project is created, we would be going to have a look, the folders and the files inside the project. And uh, we can expand the folder manifest and we'll see a predefined package XML. So you see a project is loaded. I'll click on manifest and there's a package.xml file. When I click on package.xml, these are the packages. And you can see in this package.xml, uh, we can extract the members of, we can extract the Apex class. It will extract Apex component, Apex pages, Apex test suite, Apex triggers, or a definition bundle, a static resources, and the version is 45.0. So all these components we would be going to extract from uh, Salesforce to uh, Visual Studio Code for integration. So mainly we can create new Apex class, we can create new components, we can create new pages and triggers and Visual Force pages also. So now we need to uh, connect the uh, Salesforce org because right now it is nowhere mentioned that uh, we are going to integrate it with, with Salesforce org. So again, I click on view command palette and I'm saying I just select an option SFDX authorize and org. if it is not coming you can st just type FXDX it will give you a list of options like we can create Apex triggers lightning app lightning component and so on so I first of all I need an authorization so I click on authorize and org and I use login.salesforce.com and I'll give name as uh, I just give a name I, I just give name my dev org and press enter now once you press enter uh, for verification it will open one instance for verification and as you can see it get connected it's waiting for the confirmation so it's waiting for subscription we need to enter subscription so that's my credentials for my salesforce account so i just enter username and password is ADMIN123456. So I just enter my password, username, and password, and click on login. And as soon as I click on login, uh, it will ask for an authorization, remote access authorization. And once it is connected, and if I'll get back, you can see the authorization has been successful. So in the background, uh, the, the Salesforce authorized Visual Studio Code to perform further operation. And as you can see, the authorization has been done successful with organization ID. And now we can close the browser if it is required. But I'll just keep it open so that I can show you further operations on it. And you can see I got uh, a, a, it's a, it ended with the exit code zero so there is no error there are no there is no further error here now uh, i need to retrieve the metadata from salesforce org i need to retrieve all my apex classes so let me show you a list of apex classes first so i have a couple of apex classes and i would like to extract all these apex classes in uh, visual studio 
So I just right click on package.xml and I'll say retrieve source in manifest from org. So retrieve source from org or uh, we can say retrieve uh, like SFDX retrieve source from org. So I click on retrieve source from org. I right click retrieve source from org and it would be retrieving source from org so it will connect to my salesforce org and it will it will perform a retrieve operation and it will retrieve all my apex classes and the required files and that would be available under force uh, force app so the retrieval the retrieval process is going on it's not yet completed so it, it may take some time it depends on the number of classes you have and you can see start uh, retrieving the data and i'll click on force.com app and classes and you can see all these classes are retrieved successfully these all our classes are same which are available in my salesforce org so it's successfully ex uh, uh, it has been retrieved successfully here. So that's these are the apex classes. Now let's check whether it is correct or not. So there's a class named apex class or uh, sorry add image ext. So let me search whether this class is there or not. So add image ext and add image ext dot class. And when I click on this, this is the class. That's the class, and the same code exists in this class also. So that's the class and it's a controller and it's an apex class controller which would be retrieving the image from the uh, attachment based on the parent id and the uh, order by created date in descending order so it's the same thing is happening here so that's the way we can extract the apex class and the other op other objects like classes are there if we have some components so it will load components also uh, it will add all pages so these all are pages these all are visual force pages which has been extracted now let's assume i would like to design a new visual force page so i simply say right click and i'll say create a visual force page and i'll give here test visual force page now the advantage of using this is uh, we can we can create visual force pages we can create apex classes and we can test it at we can test it here only and once it is once the testing is successful we can deploy it on our salesforce org so now that's a visual force page and i just wanted to create a visual force page which would be uh, getting input from user and store data into uh, account object so i'm using here a standard controller account and i just write apex colon page block apex colon page block section and you can see it also it gives you help at runtime so apex colon input field value is equal to account dot name and name and phone so apex colon input field sorry apex colon input field value is equal to account dot uh, account dot phone account dot phone and finally i need one button so apex colon command button value is equal to click and we can add an action action is equal to save so that's the way we created a visual force page 
and let me save this first of all so i just save all i'll just save everything and now i would like to deploy this back on salesforce so i can directly say i can directly deploy it deploy source to org deploy so i can say deploy this on my org so i say deploy source to org and it will deploy this visual force page on my salesforce org and the page will be test visual force page dot page so let me go and check first and that's the apex class let's check for visual force pages and the process is uh, okay the process is failed to run uh, the best part is that we can check the updates the why it is uh, must be followed by other attribute okay so it's so you can see okay this is missing apex colon page and now let's save this and deploy it once again so i'll just deploy this once again So it will give you all errors here only, and then we can deploy it. Uh, okay, so again, a new error is coming because we are we are using command button and input field, so it should be add bit within apex colon form tag. It's a rule whenever we want it, whenever we are getting any input from user, it should be included in it should be included in apex colon form tag. yeah so the process is completed successfully and you can see we got a success message that source to org successfully run and the visual force page has been added successfully uh, on our salesforce org so let me go and check on my visual force page and you can see a new page is added here that test visual force page we can preview it and when i click on preview we can get input from user and it can while clicking on a button the data gets stored into salesforce org so that's the same code we we mentioned in our uh, in visual studio in same manner if you want to create any apex class so if i want to create any apex class we can create the apex class directly uh, by right clicking create apex class we can create triggers components and we can deploy it on uh, uh, deploy it from visual studio code onto organization so and if we have some apex test classes so we can test those classes over here also but right now there is no test class so i'm not able to test any classes here so if you have some aura component we can we we can we can uh, work on those aura components or triggers or some static resources and and so on so that's the way we use visual studio code to deploy the code on salesforce or pages onto salesforce so that's all in this video i hope you found this video interesting and this will help you a lot to gain more knowledge on salesforce and uh, you will learn a lot with this if you have some queries related to Salesforce, if you have some requirements on Salesforce training, Salesforce support, you can contact to us. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.